صلي وسلم وبارك وأنعم عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه ومن تبعه بلا يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا معهم ومنهم برحمتك أرحم الراحمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أفحسبتم أنما خلقناكم عبثا وأنكم إلينا لا ترجعون وقال عز من قائل إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا Dear brothers, dear sisters Inshallah briefly we would be learning about what is our deen this beautiful way of life uh, and how to perform this way of life. First of all, this deen is about Hukuk Allah and Hukuk Al Ibad, or we call it Hukuk and Fara'id, rights and responsibilities. But not just rights and responsibilities, we have to add up in it one important thing once we are performing these responsibilities once we are fulfilling all the rights we have to add taqwa allah the almighty telling us in fact asking us in surah al-mu'minun ayah number 115 that is the third last ayah of surah al-mu'minun the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite this ayah a lot. أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا Were you assuming we have created you for nothing? وَأَنَّكُمْ and that إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ You are not going to return back to us. Uh, this is one of the assumptions lead us away and further away from Allah. And Allah the Almighty asking us, are you in this assumption that we have created you and in Arabic Abath is a childish play. Then in Surah Al-Isra, Allah the Almighty telling us that in sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ula'ik kana anhu mas'ula. That be aware your hearing, your sight, and your mind, whatever you think, you plan, you perform or you commit, all of it you are going to be held responsible about sooner or later. <laughs> Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling us, لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَا عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ When we will be standing before Allah, no abd no person, no man would be able to move a bit from his place until Hatta Yusal An Khisal until replying to Allah, telling him about few things. And on top An Shababi Fima Abla his whole youth was for home. وَعَنْ عُمُرِهِ فِي مَا أَفْنَاهِ His whole life. Who was the objective of his life? وَعَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَهِ وَفِي مَا أَنْفَقَهِ About his wealth. From where he was earning. What was the sources of earning? Hurting people from haram. Hurting Allah and His creation or from lawful sources. And then 
وَفِيمَا أَنْفَقَهُ Upon whom he spent. Again on halal or haram. And the last question, وَعَنْ عِلْمِهِ مَاذَا عَمِلَ فِيهِ The knowledge, the senses, we have provided him with how he was using it and right or wrong so first we are responsible about each and everything we are performing keep this in mind we are being observed by Allah we being watched by him and we are going to help accountable about each and everything we are doing now what is this deen this way of life it is as i started with hukuk and faraid rights and responsibilities let me very quickly go through them then i'll concentrate how to fulfill these hukuk and faraid hukuk allah and that is half of deen all the rights of allah upon us the responsibilities towards him how to fulfill it prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in fact quran teaching us 10 pillars of hukuk allah and among hukuk allah iman because hukuk allah also are in divided in two number one among the six to believe in the existence of god he exists and his existence is much stronger than mine he is the one who is uh, having uh, all the existence mine is temporary I am here today, tomorrow I'm gone. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكْ كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكْ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Every single creation would be done with, would die, would finish, have fana, accept your Lord. Al-Jalali wal Ikram, the Almighty, the Bountiful. We believe as in Quran, in a hadith, Al Iman Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusuli wa Yomil Akhir wa Bil Qadr, Khairihi wa Sharihi min Allah Ta'ala. To believe in Allah, in His Wujud, to believe in all angels. To believe in the books which Allah the Almighty has revealed, in His messengers, to believe in the last day that there would be Hisab, and to believe in the power of Allah the Almighty, in the ultimate knowledge of Allah the Almighty. He knows each and everything, and His Qadr. His measurement, his knowledge, never interfere with my choices. Because the choices I have, it is also given by him. Then, after knowing about Iman, Ibadah, and Ibadah, to fulfill what I have believed in. To put it in, action my beliefs once i put them in action that is ibadah and ibn taymiyyah rahimahullah he explains ibadah he said it starts with ma'rifat allah to know allah to recognize him he said this is the first stage of ibadah the second stage of ibadah, once you start knowing him, you will start actually relating yourself to him. That is nisbah. Once you have both the third stage or rank, mahabbat Allah. And once you have all the three, 
you have al qurb min Allah, you will get closer to Allah. And having all these, you will start obeying Allah with your own will, with your liking. And the last stage is you will hand over yourself to Almighty, to His will. This is ibadah. That, oh Allah, now whatever you decide, whatever you say, I am pleased with. And I am going to become your servant. I'm ready for that. So ibadat Allah is not by inheritance or by force. It is all with my striving, struggling, getting closer, knowing him, having this nisbah with Allah. May Allah the Almighty grant us. These are hukuk Allah. Then the other half of deen, which we learn from Quran, from Sunnah, hukuk al-ibad. How to deal, how to treat all the relatives, those who have rights on me, among the creation of Allah, and starting with my parents, with my mother, father, with my spouse, wife, husband, my children, my sisters, brothers, and then all the relatives closer than closer, my neighbors, all humans, subhanAllah. Then even animals, their rights upon me, plants, and my responsibilities towards them. And the other part of hukuq al-ibad, mu'amalat, dealings. Whatever deals with monetary stuff, with money, with wealth, how fair I am in it. So this is very briefly deen, four things. Let me repeat them. Iman, ibadat, hukuq Allah. Akhlaq and mu'amalat, hukuq al-ibad. Iman, we know it, our beliefs, our faith. Ibadat, how to put this faith into action. All forms of worship. These are hukuq Allah, rights of Allah, and our responsibilities towards it. Then hukuq al-ibad, akhlaq, our ethics, manners, towards every single person around me and my responsibility how to fulfill it and then when it comes to mal to materialistic things how much fear i am now we learn these from quran from sunnah but what happens when we are fulfilling them we are not really there Ruh or Ruhaniya, uh, our spirituality is not really there. Reason, we are doing it just thinking that Quran is a book of halal and haram. By the way, most of people, you ask them, what is more, halal or haram? They would start with haram, it's of course more, wal-ayyadu billah which is totally other way around. Haram is the fewer limited thing which Quran names as hudud Allah, the boundaries of Allah, and don't get even closer to it. These are the haram stuff. Everything we have is lawful, is halal, Allowed, mubah, al aslu fil ashya al ibah. Everything is halal. So number one, clear this misconception that everything Allah the Almighty has blessed us with is halal, except few things. Allah the Almighty Himself and His Messenger taught us. Don't get closer to these. 